Well, teen parent relationships can be troubled at the best of times and school holidays aren't always the best of times. I still have a teenager at home who I adore, love to bits, but teenagers are definitely a challenge. Have a little look at this. Hey, Laser, did you write the get well card for Pup Pup? Oh, Laser, come on. What do I have to do? I, I bought you the card. I put it on your desk. It's all you have to do is sign Mom, it. Mom, settle down. Okay, I'll do it. Hey. You don't tell me to settle, mister. Whatever. I have other plans anyways. What other plans? <sighs> I asked you a question. I said I'd do something with Paul, OK? God. That is mm. scarily familiar. <laughs> I am very thrilled that our next guest has plenty of ideas to help us manage communication between darling teens and not-so-darling parents. Please welcome psychologist Sally Ann McCormick. <laughs> Communication. Well, interesting. I, I think a lot of us actually can look at this clip and just go, ah, oh, yep, that's my household. Although mm. a lot of adolescent boys tend to grunt a little bit more than mm. he did. So, uh, but one of the things to take from that really is the mum was nagging. And that's, you know, the negative communication that we have with our teens. And one of the things that I would actually say to parents, uh, and I'm hoping my children aren't actually watching my teenagers because <laughs> I've got four of them oh. uh, who are probably just sitting there and just going, Mum, just follow your own advice for you. But <laughs> one of the things is to, is to make sure that our interaction's more positive. Well, how do you not nag? I mean, I can also see that she was just trying to get something done there. Yeah, she was being a little bit I just... wouldn't have to nag if you do yeah, it. So how do we stop that? Well, I don't have to nag. Well, stop nagging. Well, I have to do... How do we yeah. have positive communication we with need... teenagers? Yeah, we need to make sure that in our interactions we have you know, aim for at least 85% either positive or neutral because a lot of our time we spend, you know, that may be her only communication with her son for the day, which is, you know, do this, you haven't done that, go and fix this. And that, that doesn't really establish a good relationship. We need to listen to them more. We need to communicate in a more positive manner rather than the way that, and that we do. And we not speak to anyone else like that. No, exactly. We speak to our children and often our partners mm. like that, but we would never, mm. ever speak yeah. to anyone else One of like the suggestions that. you have is a lot of the time it's trying to find that connection point with teenagers, which is really difficult. They've got busy lives, they're starting to become independent adults, which can be confronting for parents. You have a great tip about trying to offer to do things, such as, can I drive you here? Why do you suggest that? What can that achieve? Oh, look, for one thing, it's they're a captive audience. <laughs> so when we want to talk to them, we actually have them in the car. And so we can talk to them and, and have the conversations. One of the rules that I would establish if you have pre-teens at the moment is no technology in the car. Because the first thing mm. the teenagers these, do, these days, they just put their earphones in. And, um, but it's interesting. I'm in a privileged position being a psychologist because I work with adolescents and you know parents just bring them into my office and say fix them mm. and, oh. yeah, and uh, you know that doesn't really work very well no. but an interesting thing firstly is that the children want to communicate with their parents they actually want to have a positive interaction and the parents see it as though the children are you know saying look no stay away from me you know I'm sick of uh, sick of speaking to you but but really they just want to have a relationship with with us is so it very you, much on their terms though uh, no I don't actually think so I think that you know if you think about our interactions, we do, as soon as they walk in the door, what's the first thing we say to them? Unpack your lunchbox, have you done your homework? You know, you forgot to feed the chickens this morning. Mm. We, we, we're so negative right from the start. Let's, you know, if the, the advice for you parents is let's be positive. Let's start off in a really positive way. Say, hi, how was your day? We need to listen more. I love the Judge Judy quote, which is, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. What about some parents that are watching this, though, that do that, they come in the door, how was your day, Dal? They really try, no, it's fine. That's There's what nothing. I was going to say. What and do you do if you get shut grunts? down? So, mm. and then suddenly, what's happening is you feel like you're growing apart. And I can understand a parent getting very nervous and insecure and fearful of that. So they try harder, and the teenager moves away more. How do you fix that? I, I think when they do shut you out. I mean, a teenage boy does grunt, and you know, anyone who has teenage boys will know that. I have girls, so they don't actually grunt; they swear. Yeah, I think girls. it's really. Yes. I don't yeah, think I do. boys actually can't speak for, at a certain. <laughs> 30, no, no, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Their voices are changing. Well, their hormones are raging, yeah. and they're going. Yeah. <laughs> they can't yeah. speak. Yeah. Well, and one of the things we have to make sure that we don't patronise them, because sometimes mm. the. 
Hi, darling. How was your day? Is is sometimes quite sarcastic, and One maybe thing, we don't really care. Yeah, we we do care. I think we all care yeah. about how our kids' yeah. days have gone. But I think it is it's it's a sort of a shallow question because yeah. you can go it was good. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, I'd love to. And and I think when you talk about being positive, it's not. Wow, honey, your bio has got a particular musk yeah. today, or <laughs> you know, your room's lovely and dirty. It's a sort of it's sort of positive in, in an in an effective way. Yes. Like for instance, I know you're doing this project at school. I found this article. It's sort of a great way to go, I'm engaged with your life and I'm not trying to meddle, but this might help you. <laughs> and, and they go, oh, I've and already really... Googled that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read these papers. <laughs> but also understanding, Thalian, too, that as Noni pointed out, raging with hormones, mm. chemicals, they're changing. Is it, is it acknowledging that and saying to them, now listen, that's a hormonal behaviour that I, that I understand, yeah. but there's a difference. I'll accept that to a certain point, but you need to take responsibility for your hormones. We, we really need to stop sweating the small, the, you know, the big stuff. Don't, you know, don't, don't get angry with them about, you know, everything that they do wrong. If their rooms are messy, look, just close the door. Don't, so choose don't your make battles. a big, Negotiate. Yeah, don't make a big mm. deal of it. But you're right about the hormones. The, the children's hormones are changing, and we have to remember to change our parenting style too. Mm. I mean, how many of us are so used to saying, "Come on, darling, help me," you know, wipe down the walls? And you know, your eight-year-old might be okay with doing that, but your 15, 16-year-old is so not. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we need to, you know, they're trying to become independent adults. We need to respect that and move along with it. Mm. And one of the things that I was asked today too was to give some tips for, for the adolescents. Now, my thoughts are it's 9.30 on a holiday morning or in Queensland it's um, back to school. There really aren't any adolescents watching at this time. But if there are, mm. um, we parents, just so you guys know, we parents don't get over things really quickly. When they fight with us and they say things like, you know, I hate you, you know, you don't do this, you're horrible parents, whatever they might say, then two minutes later they'll say, drive me to my friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> and you just go... <gasps> Just got your room. <laughs> We're still really angry, but they don't get it because they get over things really quickly. Mm. So, offer us a cup of tea. You know, get us something, and then ask us the question. <laughs> you know, get get things in in order before you try that. Great insights. Please thank parenting experts, Eliane McCormick. <laughs> and as usual, Eliane's tips are on the Circle website. So head there and have a look if you need some help. It's Tuesday. You're watching the Circle. <laughs>